You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as our guest Paul Vallis, who's running for mayor in the city of Chicago. And we're taping this on September 13th. We did part one of this show just a few weeks ago on August 30th. Mm -hmm. At that time, you may remember those of you who were watching that show, we started out talking about, well, you know, here was this headline in the Sun Times saying, when will he decide? And I said, of course, Ram is running. And I think you may have said, well, maybe you didn't say, whatever. So we, everybody, most people thought that Ram was running, and then a week later he says he's not. So we're starting the show. We're not going to go through, there are 15 candidates. We're not going to go through all that. I'll just make a quick prediction, quick prediction. My prediction is this race will probably come down to four candidates. We're five and a half months away. The uh, first election, and perhaps the only one, is, Fe is February 26th. If Paul or somebody else gets more than a majority, that's it. That's right. right. If nobody gets more than a majority, the top two are in a runoff on April 2nd, five and a half months to February 26th. Petitions are filed near the right after Thanksgiving into the first week of December. Then we'll know who's really running. All that being said, Tony Preckwinkle has not declared yet that she's running. I'm certain she is. You agree, Paul? Mm -hmm. She is the, what is Tony? Just tell people about Tony Preckwinkle. Well, uh, Tony Preckwinkle is president of the Cook County Board, and also she served as a longtime member of the city council. I had the, uh, we had the opportunity to work with her, uh, obviously, when I was city uh, budget director, revenue director, budget director. Which was when? In 1990 to 93, revenue director, 93 to 95, city budget director. And, of course, obviously, I worked with her uh, when I was uh, uh, CEO of the Chicago Public Schools. So we, we've had a, you know, we've she had a long-standing she relationship. Was, Alderman? was it, Is that relevant? Tell me. Yeah, what I, was she? In I don't think it's relevant, at well, least not to me. So she was a public school teacher, right? She was, she was a public school teacher. CPS, and, right? Uh, I believe so. High you know, school, I think. Right? I don't remember. I just remember she was a teacher. Why is and, that not relevant? Uh, no, it is relevant. Oh, what I'm saying is I don't remember. Uh, oh, you don't know too much about her experience right, as a teacher. I, right. I don't know too much um, okay. about her experience as a teacher. So she's in, and one of the early polls, of course, the poll was, uh, was, or was, was, was run, I guess, by SEIU, SEIU, along with public policy polling. And what did it have her at? Do you remember? 25%? 35%? Like had her top. So, yeah, okay. and had me in second place and McCarthy a distant third. Oh, was he very, he was distant from you? Like what was the yes, difference between? Yes, by four or five percentage points. Oh, that's distant? Okay. What, what was your well, percentage? Well, in a poll with as many candidates, well, you know, there were actually right, different. Right, it doesn't matter. There were actually different lineups. But the bottom line is the poll essentially said that if there was a runoff tomorrow, uh, I mean, if there was an election tomorrow, uh, Tony Prankwinkle and I would be in the runoff. Okay. Well, you, Paul likes that poll. I like that poll. <laughs> and uh, then I'm, see, I'm, or the, some other polls have Gary McCarthy slightly ahead of you, right? Well, I, the SEIU poll, the most recent poll with Rom out, ha has me. I know, but some other yeah. polls with Rom. Some Ron earlier have, polls have had had McCarthy him ahead and of you. I. You're real close. Made a difference between, by uh, one wait, percentage point. So I still think it's close. I think Tony's yeah, ahead. Yeah, it's close. Not by much, in my guess. Uh, then Gary McCarthy, then Paul Vallis. That order could be reversed. And then you've got, we didn't have any Hispanic candidates in the race, which was odd last time, because the city is a third white, third black, third Hispanic. Although the SEIU poll did include Hispanic candidates. Um, they were a variety of polls, a variety of options, but one had, I, I think one might have had Gutierrez, one had Mendoza in the race. Did any have uh, Chuy Garcia? Uh, no. Oh, that's odd. No. So I'm predicting, people have said... Chewy hasn't got, got has not gotten into the race yet, but people have said he would. People Gary Chico has all but said he'll get in. I don't know if he said he will. Uh, so, and Susana Mendoza is thinking about it. Ricky Munoz said he was thinking about it. So those are four Hispanics. So I'm, but I think those will collapse to one. My guess it collapses to Chewy Garcia, but you know I don't think Susana Mendoza is going to challenge if Chewy wants to do it. They're not going to split the Hispanic vote. Same thing with Ricky Munoz. Uh, but Chico might. You know, Gary. Is he the kind of guy who may say, hey, I'm not getting out of this thing? Oh, I don't know. You know, for me, I don't care who's in. I mean, this hasn't been about what the lineup is. Now, with this lineup, Preckwinkle, McCarthy, Vallis, Garcia, my 
my prediction of the lineup. Say those are the top four. Who are you running against? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not running against. Uh, I'm. It's not who I'm running against. It's what I'm running for. Uh, you know, if I spent, I mean, with all the candidates in and out, and let me point out that, you know, for, for the candidates who are now just deciding to get in, uh, you know, one has to ask themselves, if, if they didn't have enough guts to get in while Rahm Emanuel was mayor, will they have enough guts uh, to make the decisions that need to be made to move the school, to move the uh, city forward uh, if they get elected. Look, I mean, the bottom line is uh, a number of those candidates, a number of those candidates uh, uh, were, um, or, or the potential candidates, uh, were approached about supporting other candidates in the race. And, you know, a, a number of individuals said, well, we're, you know, Rahm Emanuel, we don't want to run against Rahm Emanuel, we don't want to line up against Rahm Emanuel, uh, and, uh, and now suddenly Rahm Emanuel is out, and instead of supporting candidates in the race, um, you know, a number of these individuals are not planning to run themselves. I think the bottom line is if we get too bogged down in the numbers that we have, whether we ultimately have 10 or 12, you still have to get those petitions. You would still have to get the well, you, that's not going to be a problem enough for signatures. Any of, you, any of you big people, right? Mm -hmm. You have to get what twelve thousand five hundred, right? Yeah, and I think and what what, how many will you get? Well, hopefully, we'll get three or four times that amount. Yeah, because, but the point is, there will be a narrowing. I think there'll be a narrowing of the number of candidates. Oh, but yes. if we get too, you know, if if a candidate gets too preoccupied with who he or she is running against, they're going to lose sight of what needs to be done, yeah. and, and and that means. Uh, what needs to be done is, uh, is any candidate running for mayor has got to offer very specific prescriptions for dealing with the critical issues that our city is facing. That is rising crime and the need to make all okay. neighborhoods safe and secure. That is creating economic opportunities uh, in all communities. And then finally, addressing uh, the long-term uh, uh, financial issues. How are we going to get the city on the right financial track? And so at the end, so, um, you know, I've always said that I'm running on the issues. I'm not running against someone as much as I'm running for something. And, and, and that for something is to articulate a vision and a plan for the city that can make neighborhoods safer, that can expand economic opportunities and can stabilize finances. So we spoke a lot about violence in the last show and a fair amount about education and some of the issues, the sexual, the rapes, the sexual assaults, the quality of education, and so forth. So we're going to start this with the third thing you mentioned, which was city finances. We're going to do some on economic development. We may come back to the race a little bit, you know, the horse race, and maybe come back to sort of hit the main points, as you just did, mm -hmm. on violence sure. again and on education. But on city finances, what do you think is the biggest challenge if you were elected mayor, okay, and it was the sure. Vallis administration? <laughs> you okay? know, it's hard to tackle this issue in 60 seconds. So I well, think wait, let me get the question. Oh, okay. Let me get the question out. <laughs> I'm anticipating mind reader. Okay. the question yeah. that is coming, okay. but go ahead. Okay, so if you were elected mayor, it's the Vallis administration, and uh, I guess that is 2019. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think is the biggest challenge you're facing? Well, let me uh, you know, on the finance side. Let me respond by saying two things. One is it's really important that uh, the next mayor be somebody who has, in effect, uh, 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 met the challenges of taking over large governmental multi uh, institutions with multi-billion-dollar budgets that were in crisis and addressing those financial crises while at the same time improving services. And I've done that. I've done that uh, 14 times. I've done that in 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 four different You've states. You've done what? Uh, I've taken over government. Look, I three years as city budget director, managing the city's budget, yeah. balancing the budget every year, not raising taxes. Six years as school superintendent, we inherited a a billion dollar structural five year structural deficit. We left the district with almost a billion dollars in cash balances, um, balancing five out of six uh, uh, budgets, so multi billion you're good dollar with numbers, budgets. Is that what you're, excuse well, me. The, you're, you're trying to say you're good with handling uh, budgets? Is that what I you're I think what to I'm say? trying to say is that uh, I've demonstrated the skill, uh, the skills needed to take over large governmental institutions that were on the verge of bankruptcy and, and saving them from bankruptcy and putting them on the right financial track. Is it, your, is it your opinion that the city of Chicago is on the verge of bankruptcy? Well, I think the city of Chicago is in serious financial crisis, and 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 unless we get at the underlying causes of those of that crisis, unless we lay out a long-term financial plan that will 
that will bring spending in line with revenues uh, uh, and, while investing in the critical areas that are needed to, um, to uh, uh, create conditions okay. for growth in the city, the city's going to continue we're to struggle. We're both agreed that at the beginning <laughs> of the show, we're going to shorten, I'm going to shorten up my question. Okay. I've been, have you noticed, I've been short questions. Yes. I don't know if you're holding I'm up your end of the bargain. Better. The answers are a little long. All right. I, all We've right. We've got 20 minutes left. Yes. I don't want to, I want you to cover mm -hmm. some ground. So let's try to keep it short. I ask you a simple question. No lecture. The simple question is, what is the biggest challenge? Well, the biggest... The biggest, just give me, is like, is it spending? Is it taxes? Is it pensions? I'm just throwing out some things. Give me something concrete that is the biggest challenge. Well, not, I, not like, okay, I'm going to manage all the budgets no, in the no, world. No, look, look, look. You know, it, it's, it's a simple question. Look, Please you know, try to answer it. It's really, important, it's really important that people understand when they're looking at the candidates that they've got to look at for a candidate that has been in this situation before. And I'm not saying it's as extreme. You said that. All right, so I, I've mentioned that. But, okay. but the biggest challenge is to bring spending in line with revenues. Now, is that only a spending issue or is it a revenue issue? I think it's a combination of things. Uh, but, but, but is there something, I'm going to interrupt you, so I'm going to, well, I'm going to interrupt you because when you say the biggest challenge is being revenue in line with expenses, what I'm going to say, obviously, is there any one thing that's making that alignment more difficult. Well, the, well, the the obvious thing, and the well, then obvious. Well, say it. It's okay to say obvious things on no, this program. The, no, the, just help. It's not. It's not obvious to everybody yeah, else. Well, well, obvious to you. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> well, the obvious thing is is pensions. Pensions okay. is the biggest. Is having the biggest and most adverse impact. Not only the not only the city budget, the but but the budgets and of what the schools kind of and budget states. Are, CPS, CPS is a separate thing. We'll what come we're to talking that. about? No, we're we're talking initially. I want to sort of keep it separate. City finances. We're, CPS you can come to separately and explain whether you agree it's separate or not. But pensions and things for CPS is, I believe, separate. So let's focus just on city of Chicago, city of Chicago employees. Pensions for them. We'll come to CPS, I promise. All right, well, 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 look, it's the same taxpayer who's paying, and they're not distinguishing be between whether or not their property taxes are going okay. to CPS pensions okay. or to municipal pensions. So pensions, pensions are the big thing. But when we talk about city pensions, we're talking about pensions for city employees. Okay. Um, municipal, you know, the, the, uh, for for city municipal so what's the employees, are they police funded? And fire, are they funded or not? No, they haven't been adequately and what's funded. Roughly, what is the percentage funding? For police and fire, which are the major pensions. Well, it varies. It, it, Roughly, it, approximately. Let, let me explain. Uh, the, the pension system that is in the absolute worst shape right now is the the municipal employees pension fund. They have made progress towards addressing uh, the uh, the uh, issues, the financial, uh, the you know, the financing issues for the police pension. They still have a ways to go on the firefighters. But the bottom line is, in a nutshell, the city's going to need the city's going to need. Uh, over the next five years, uh, an additional one billion, one billion fifty-six million dollars for the for the uh, for the city's pension systems. It's not all going to be required in the first year, but over uh, through. Uh, through 2023, they've, you have, they've got to increase what, what? the funding level. They have to okay. increase the funding level, the statutory From funding 25 level, percent to, 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 to over a billion dollars. It, it varies. No, but that's not a funding level. No, no, that's an amount of money. The percentages, okay. in order to get... What are the percentages that are required, is I'm asking? To get the, the systems to a 90 percent funding level by the 40-year deadline set by the state, uh, they have got to put another billion dollar, billion fifty six million dollars into the pension systems over the next five years. Period. What that will do is that will get them on track. That will get them on track to reaching that ninety percent level with more normal, smaller increases from year to year. But they're about a billion fifty six million dollars short from reaching that level to okay. where. My turn. Work, My the turn. normal you pension can't increases with problem, okay? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, okay. I'm trying to give you. I'm trying to give you I an know, explanation. No, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. I'm not an expert on this. You are. But it seems to me, from what I've read, that people have said the pensions are about 28 billion dollars short. That is 28 billion dollars of unfunded pensions that have accrued currently. <coughs> Moody says it's 42 billion. You know what the budget is, not for CPS, but just City of Chicago. What's the approximate budget for CPS? Well, uh, it's not for, for the City of Chicago. Sorry. Well, it's it's uh, it's about nine billion dollars. Okay, just under that's nine fine. Billion Good dollars. enough. Not nine counting the enterprise. Funds. So you got a nine billion dollar budget here, 
And then what I just said, which you haven't said, is that $28 billion of the pensions are unfunded and, and there's only 25% funding. I don't think that adds up that if we put a billion dollars in the pension fund for the next three or four or five years, and we're not even going to do that because it gets up to that amount, we're not going to be 90% well, funded. It can't, that math just doesn't work. You agree? Respond. It's obvious. It's not, no offense, but it's obvious you don't understand it. When they say that they're X amount of money Explain. short, it's not like they don't have that money right there. What they, what the, they budget on 30-year actuarial projections. So what they're saying that the system needs and what the obligation what the obligations okay. are to the system over that 30-year period is the amount identified. I know, but you said in five years we'll be 90% no, no, funded what I'm saying, by putting in a billion dollars a year for what, the next... We're not, you're saying in the fifth year it'll be a billion. It's going to be something less. What I'm saying is, and you're not listening, I what I'm listening. saying is that uh, in order to get pensions funded based on 30-year actuarial projections, right. okay, uh, and, and that's based on... Oh, so you're saying if we, if we put in a billion dollars in the fifth year and we keep doing that and even more, we'll eventually be 90% funded. That's right. The statutory formula. I follow I, me I, on that. Let me fine. explain the statute. No, I don't want to... Paul, no. we don't need to okay. get in the weeds, okay? <laughs> but We've got to cover a lot of ground. The statutory... We're not going to... We okay. can't right. do this every right. show, But okay? you understand? You understand? It doesn't matter whether they understand. Okay. It doesn't matter about right. me. I'm not the voter. But the statute... But the, very quickly, the statutory formula okay. to get pensions fully funded okay. is to increase the funding level here's, by over a billion a dollars question. by 2023. Do you really think we can raise taxes enough to make these pen what would you do to get these pensions funded in 20 or 30 years whenever it's going to be actually 90 percent funded if you have a 10 billion dollar or 9 billion dollar budget and say moody's is right and we're 42 billion dollars unfunded now it's you're going to have to make up 30 billion that's three times the current budget i'll just say what i'm thinking and you tell me whether you agree it seems obvious we need to have a restructuring of these pensions and the Supreme Court has says we, we can't cut benefits of things that have accrued. That's right. But the state of Illinois can give cities and villages the power to declare bankruptcy. And I'm thinking in bankruptcy, everybody's benefits could be cut for everything. If, this, if the city owes them for this, the city owes them for that, you got a pension. Right. I'm, I could be wrong on that. So tell me, have I outlined the situation in a way that it seems like we're going to have to have a restructuring, and if the state doesn't give the city, other cities as well, the power to declare bankruptcy, well, then we have to get people to somehow come around a table like this and agree voluntarily. But we can't solve this by just anting up a little bit more tax each year and then putting more in. Do you agree with that? That yeah, is the question. You know, let me respond because you, you spent two minutes asking me a, 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 getting around to the basic question. I'd say a minute, but Let that's me okay. point out, I don't anticipate that the state's going to be empowering or supporting any, any efforts by local governments to declare bankruptcy anytime soon. And if the city of Chicago did, uh, did move to declare bankruptcy, uh, that, would have, that would have a significant adverse impact on the city's uh, uh, its tax climate, its financial climate. It's already the, happened. The investment. It's already happened. The, the bottom line, it's already happened. you already answered the question. You already okay. okay. asked the question. Let me give you the answer. Uh, you know, the bankruptcy process itself uh, sometimes takes multiple years. So while you're, you're struggling through the litigation, the lawsuits, everything involved in the bankruptcy process, the city's financial conditions could significantly, could, could become significantly worse. Maybe we can get, I don't know if the camera could go over there for a second and see that airplane. Have you known major airlines that have gone through bankruptcy? Did American Airlines go through? Did United Airlines? Did, you, Look, did they come out or did they just say, they went into bankruptcy and the world stopped and their company stopped for three years. It obviously didn't. Look, you know what, uh, so why can't the city do the same thing? They work these things out, they restructure things, Oh, and if you disagree, if you disagree that that's a good thing to do, tell me your plan to whether it involves substantially higher taxes. What is your plan to deal with these enormously unfunded or underfunded pensions? Okay, so let me respond by saying, look, you know, I, I'm not going to do justice to trying to give an explanation in two minutes. On October 15th, I'm going to be addressing the City Club, uh, and uh, and and. Uh, on October 15th, I'm going to lay out my financial plan Excuse for the city. Give us a summary. No, you know, I'll give you a summary in a second. But mm -hmm. on October 15th, I'm going to lay out 
in detail because they're going to give me about an hour to do it. My financial they're not going to give you an hour. My, well, they're going to give you a half an hour. The, Q and, the Q&A is going to be, you know, uh, is going to be extended. They're going to start the, uh, my presentation early on. So they're going to give you more than just a regular right. half hour. But, but my point is I'm going to not only talk about pensions, but I'm going to talk about how to restructure the budget, how to do long-term financial planning. Suffice to say, we will not be declaring bankruptcy anytime soon, even if I wanted to declare bankruptcy. Will you have to raise taxes you know? substantially? Well, Can you answer that question? The approach that I'm going to take is threefold. Number one, uh, I'm going to look at uh, what, uh, what we're going to need to do with the state and get from the state uh, to help us. For example, the state currently right now is not picking up its full obligations for the Chicago Teachers Retirement System. They're only picking up uh, uh, future liabilities, not past liabilities, like teachers, like they do the so teachers. So what they agreed to secondly, wasn't enough. Let me go through. Let me respond. Okay. okay. Secondly, they continue to divert corporate personal property replacement tax, which legally is supposed to go to local governments. And that's about a $300 million diversion. And, and about $100 million goes to the city of Chicago. Uh, so there are things. So I will have, I will have an agenda. I will have an ag a, a state agenda that will hopefully help us chip away at that uh, uh, long-term uh, that Do they add up to $42 billion? No, that doesn't. So let me go do through. They, they, do they add up to $42 billion when you go through it? You know, this is the problem that I'm having with this discussion. I've explained to you that in order to get pensions on a formula on a, uh, uh, so, that, so that based on the state statutory mandate that the system, that the system okay. be fully funded, you've got to increase the pension contribution annually by over a billion dollars, and there's a five-year ramp up to hit that number. Mm -hmm. So it is a billion, 56 million. And whether you accept the assumptions that they're basing that projection on or not, that's the number. That's the number. In five years? In five years. And what does it have to be in 10 years? What does it have to be in 15 years? as I mentioned early on, once you have reached that threshold, the annual increases in pension contributions are then significantly diminished. In other words, they, they're like 2 or 3% a year. So once so you get... a so, billion is the target. So, so a billion is the target. So how do you get at a billion? And I think what I'm saying is, number one, I believe you have to have a progressive state agenda. Uh, look, I mean, it's, there's very, it's very likely that... that what does uh, that mean, a progressive well, state agenda? Well, you know, I think I've articulated it. What we need to do is we need to have A lot of people haven't heard it. Tell well, them. So let me, me say again, we need to make sure that we're getting uh, equitable funding on the teacher, yeah. ret teacher okay. retirement. We need to make sure that we get a corp the, the corporate personal property replacement tax yeah. revenues, which we are constitutionally uh, Anything else to, to be progressive? And, and we need to make sure that because we could very well... Uh, elect a new governor who is already running on a, I'm going to increase income taxes. And, and if, if the state increases revenues... Because that's J.B. Pritzker, you're yeah. saying? He's, well, he's, he's I, running on an increase in income taxes. Exactly. But, not, but before he even gets to whether it's a progressive income tax. Let me explain. Is that what you're saying? Let me explain. Okay. Let me explain the agenda. Uh, if there is going to be an increase, we need to make sure, and this is something municipalities fail to do, when they increased income taxes last. We need to make sure that they don't change the local government distributive formula because we are entitled to one twelfth. We are entitled, entitled to a municipalities. Can we get off the local thing? I can uh, see that. So I just want to, right, we only so got five minutes left. Answer this two right, questions. So when you say progressive, does that mean you favor a progressive income tax? And does that mean you want J.B. No, Pritzker to push for no, that? No, what I'm saying what is, is... What does progressive mean in terms of taxation? What I'm saying is that we need to be able to secure revenues, whether it's a combination, whether it's a combination, and are you going to let me answer this question now? Whether it's a combination of three things. One, us going out and securing uh, the money uh, that we're entitled to at the state level, number one. Number two, looking at the budget and trying to identify... Uh, ways that we can pare down the size of the city budget by five or six percent. I mean, one third of city employees make over a hundred thousand dollars a year, in part because we're paying okay. hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars in overtime, in overtime. Uh, uh, you know, because we don't have enough police, we okay. don't have enough. Keep so, big and picture. Then the, big and picture. then the third thing, and then the third thing is to is to pursue a number of local initiatives that are going to expand, okay. that are going to expand okay. the city, so we can generate additional okay. income. We only have four minutes okay. left, so let's try to keep it short. Okay. Um, 
Rahm Emanuel proposed, or seemed to be ready to propose, he hasn't yet, a $10 billion pension right. bond sale. You only have four minutes. You can't take 15. <laughs> right. I think you've said publicly you think that's a bad idea. Right, yes. And you oppose that whole scheme, right? Yeah, because it's not going to work. It's not going to be effective. And Can you say in 45 seconds why it's not going to work? Well, it's not going to work because it assumes that they're going to be able to borrow the money and put the money in the pension funds. And the pension fund, the earnings from the funds, will be greater than the debt, the cost of the debt service uh, on the bonds. And that assumes that we continue to have strong economic and we growth. we don't know that. So yeah, it's, and the it's assumptions, speculative, is right, what you're saying. And the, the okay. assumptions are, right. and as you know, Rod Blagojevich did that. And right. didn't work out so well. It, it, not only did he borrow $10 billion, but okay. it's been what? It's been 15 years, and we still owe $13 uh, okay. billion. Let's go over to CPS now. Okay. And let's say, it sounds like you're saying the problems with pensions of CPS are similar to what you said with the city of Chicago. That's why you were addressing, I'm assu assuming, the same. Okay? So we're not going to go specifically right. that. Okay. We'll but we will say... That. Do you agree that CPS's budget, I think it's proposed, I don't think it's been approved yet right. for the next academic year, mm -hmm. goes from six point, approximately $6.2 billion to $7.6 billion. Would you say that is irresponsible when over the last 18 years enrollment has gone down by 15%? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And at most, we might get 1% increase in enrollment this year. We might get 1% decrease. How can you justify a 20%, not you, but how can the... Anybody, how can Rahm or anybody else justify a 20% increase in the CPS budget, given these dire financial conditions you've just outlined, when enrollment in general is going down? Well, look, the bottom line is because the state, and follow me on this, because the state ha is now funding the, uh, the, uh, the teacher's retirement system contributions going forward, yeah. in effect, the, the local contributions uh, uh, have been stabilized. So in other words, okay. there's not going to yeah. be a, a need for draconian increases in local funding for the pension system. So, so the district now has an opportunity, uh, opportunity to develop the type of financial plan that ensures that, that uh, they can bring financial Excuse stability me, to the agree, district. Do you agree with this budget as proposed and the specific thing I've raised? Do you think it's wise I want to make my point. I, no, I, will, I want you to answer that one question, then you can make your point. Do you agree the budget should go from this year six point two billion to seven point six billion over the next academic? Uh, you know, I'm Do you agree or not? And then you can answer. Could you I'm just gonna, give me that one answer? I'm gonna answer that after making my point. My you point, only have two minutes. All right, so. well, well I can make that in two you minutes. You got one minute. If left. you don't interrupt Actually, me, the I can show make it in we two have minutes. one minute left. All right, all right so okay. this is my point. I, I think you have an opportunity now to lay out a five year blueprint that stabilizes the finances and brings spending in line with revenue. So that said, uh, that that budget number that you're quoting includes the capital, includes like a billion dollars in new capital. So should we spend a billion on what are we doing? We're expanding for enrollment that well, doesn't going up. I think everything should be looked at. I mean, can we afford universal? You have looked at. Can you give me an opinion? You've well, got, I'm giving you've you. You've got like 40 seconds left yeah, to give me an opinion. opinion. The opinion. Not look at. Give me a well, yes, no, something. The opinion is they're not going to spend. You're not. They're not going to appropriate that much money and spend it in a single year. So you've no, got. No, I'm just saying. Do you agree not, with that? I don't care whether they spend it in one year or right. five. Do you agree with that proposal uh, to raise the capital spending portion of this budget from like 200 million to to a billion? Do you agree with that? Well, it, that's what they're doing. Do I agree with that? I, I agree that they have a billion dollars in capital needs because schools are in need of renovations. So you would support that budget? Well, what I'm saying is I would look at whether or not that can be stretched out over an extended period of time. But do I need? Okay. The, do I believe that that? Do I believe that that budget increase needs to be the size that it's been submitted? I I don't. Okay. Folks. I don't believe that. Well, you saw another time when we didn't quite get through it. You can be the judge. Was it my fault? Was it my fault that we only covered one subject? Mm -hmm. We didn't get to economic development. One of us cheated you folks out of knowing Paul's views about economic development. But you come back next week and every week to public affairs, maybe we'll get there.